So again, good morning. And um, the theme for these Dharmets this week is effort. And um, yesterday I emphasized initiating effort, that sometimes initiating effort takes a lot of energy because of all the forces of distractions, forces of preoccupation, the strong inner life, emotions that, and, and motivations, desires that sometimes take over and make it very hard to be present. And sometimes the initiating effort takes a lot of effort. Sometimes initiating effort takes very little effort. Initiating effort often has to be done over and over again in terms of meditation and being aware. And that it's not an incidental thing to keep beginning again and beginning again. It's really a very powerful conditioning. It's a very powerful shaping of us and, and realigning and harmonizing and resetting. What is it that drives us? What is it that moves us? What, where are we? And how present we can be in this life. How aware. As the initiating effort kind of takes hold and we begin to become a little bit more familiar and more able to kind of see what's happening in the present moment and maybe even dwell in the present moment more fully for some period of time, maybe not so long, but just enough to see that we have some choice about where we put our energy, where we put our effort. And that comes to the second part aspect of effort which in the Buddha's teaching is called right endeavoring, right endeavor, uh, the, the sixth step of the Eightfold Path. And it's called endeavor because it's what we're trying to do, what we're aiming towards in our activity, in our practice. And um, there's a very simple principle involved in understanding what is right endeavor. Uh, it's not a particular thing we do, but it's a, a way of uh, kind of finding our bearing, our direction, what's useful to do, what's important to do. And the analogy I'll give for it is for a farmer who is growing food, growing plants for food. And that farmer has four different activities that has to be done to grow the you know, many, but four kind of overarching things about growing those plants. For, uh, first, it has to um, uh, clear away the, the ground so there's space there for the plants to grow, so the ground can be tilled, fertilized, and so there's the seeds, that seedlings can grow there. So it's clearing away the weeds. The second step is that if their weeds grow, to uh, remove them. So the weeds that are, you know, so the ground is cleared, but then they appear. Or to, the, he has to keep tilling the soil or hoeing the soil to keep the plants, the weeds, from growing. This, the next two principles is that um, the farmer needs to plant the seeds or plant a seedling that can grow into some food plant. And then the farmer has to nourish the growth of that plant, support it, and let it keep growing and be healthy, water it, maybe fertilize it, protect it in various ways. So these four steps of things are called um, um, avoiding, removing, cultivating, and maintaining. And what we're doing when it comes to, when, you know, that's one thing for a farmer, but for us, um, what it means in practice is we want to uh, uh, remove and avoid unhelpful states of mind, unhelpful activities, things which are unskillful, unwholesome, that are unhealthy psychologically, spiritually, physically. And we want, to, uh, we want to bring forth, plant seeds, get, get, plant the seedlings 
of things which are wholesome or helpful, healthy to do, skillful. And once we've planted those seeds, we want to keep them going. We want to practice them, keep them developing, keep them going. Many years ago, a friend of mine told me of a kayaker in Alaska who came up with a his own analogy for this, these, it's called four, four Right Endeavors. And that is, um, a kayaker has to uh, stay out of trouble, out in the open sea, I guess. When the kayaker gets in trouble, get out of trouble. A kayaker should cultivate good kayaking skills and then the kayaker should uh, maintain those skills. So when we find ourselves meditating and have enough presence of mind to recognize what's happening, if we have the capacity to recognize, make a distinction between what is it that leads to our detriment? What are we doing that brings suffering? Where we get contracted and tight, limited, uh, uh, and where and what is it we do and what, where's the direction to go to become free of the suffering, free of the contraction, the tension, the pressure that we kind of caught in. And so one of the purposes of initiating effort in mindfulness practice is to bring us present enough that we begin to feel, sense, see, perceive this very simple distinction between where is the suffering, where is the tension, where is the pressure, the stress, and where is what's wholesome, which is freeing, opening, relaxing, um, non-suffering. And what activities of mind, what activities, what actions of body lean more in one direction or lean more in the other direction? And so to be able to see that and then have a very simple course correction. Let go of what is harmful. Let go of what is unhealthy, unhelpful. And then pick up what is health, healthy. So in terms of meditation, directly itself, um, it might entail looking at how we are meditating.